Good evening, Bio Nation. I hope you are doing well tonight. My name is Matt Williamson. And I am Corey McFan. And you are watching Married to College Esports. Uh, we apologize for taking a couple minutes to, before we, we get started. Uh, we're just trying to get everything set up here because we have two matches going on just about the same time. Uh, we have our Valorant team that will be going up against St. Xavier University in the Nay Star League Varsity Plus competition which you are going to be seeing in a few minutes, which should be very exciting because both teams are undefeated right now. So it is the clash of the undefeated. It's going to be a close game, hopefully. <laughs> it will be exciting for sure. So right now, they're taking care of the map picks and bans. We also have our Rocket League match that's going to be going on in just a little bit. We will not be able to stream that, unfortunately, because it's really hard to stream two games at the same time. But I'll try to see how it's going as things are progressing. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Trying to oversee two games at the same time has its challenges. But all right. So speaking of Valorant, let's go over who we're playing today. So starting, we will have uh, freshman Walker Dale Wave. We will have sophomore Jazz Smith Weenie Hut Jr. Senior Artemy Strepnet's mom. Senior Spence Tenney Spence. And freshman Iwana McLovin. Uh, Edible Drywall will be playing in map two, is what I've been told. And of course, we have our head coach, uh, Derek Games. But all right. Um, I think right now we're, as I said, we're in the middle of the map picks of bands. So as of now, the bands were Lotus and Fracture. The first map is going to be Haven, where St. Xavier will be attacking first. So Marietta will be defending that first. Uh, then the next map is going to be Ascent. Where Marietta will defend it, and I think, think right now they're working on what will be the, the third map. So while we're waiting on that, let's go over a couple of quick announcements. So first, we want to give a shout out to HyperX for being the official peripheral sponsor for Marietta College Esports. They have provided our facility with keyboards, mice, headsets, uh, mouse pads, microphones. Uh, the, the quality is great. I mean, we're using one of their quadcast microphones right now that you guys are hearing. So hopefully the audio is very sharp, very crisp and clean. So if you want to check out your own HyperX gear, please be go to the, please be sure to go to hyperx.gg slash Marietta ES. Uh, the QR code is up on your screen. We also want to give a shout out to Over the Moon Pizza for their support. Uh, every Tuesday is Marietta College Night at their restaurant on Front Street in Marietta where if you uh, go there with your student ID, you can get discounts on food and drinks. Uh, they will have their uh, Switch up where you can play some Super Smash Brothers or some Mario Kart. Uh, they'll also be airing our matches tomorrow. Speaking of matches tomorrow, we do have a couple of games for you. Uh, we'll have our Rocket League match. I believe it's going to be at 5.30, and then Overwatch plays at 7, so that'll be really exciting. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully we win. <laughs> that would be nice. That would be the ideal scenario. That, I think, would, that would be nice. I think you guys can do it. You've been doing very well in the, in the uh, Nay Star League competitions, and tomorrow will be a Nay Star League competition. We'll see. But, all right. Uh, but, yeah, so definitely go check them out. Especially on Tuesdays, but if you can't do Tuesday, then I mean any day of the week is perfectly fine, but definitely go check them out uh, on Tuesday. But all right. Uh, other announcements. We're always looking for more students for our esports program, whether you're a high school senior or a current Marietta College student. We have varsity titles in Fortnite, League of Legends, Overwatch 2, Rainbow Six Siege, Rocket League, Super Smash Brothers, Valorant. Of course, we have our facility here uh, on campus at the gathering place. We have several coaches for some of our teams. Uh, we try to provide support to help our students succeed uh, inside and outside of esports. And scholarships are available for high school seniors and college transfers. So for more information, you can go to HyperX. Uh, no, I'm still thinking of the HyperX sponsor. You can still go to HyperX.gg slash Yes, but that's only for HyperX stuff. If you want more information about our esports program, go to our link tree, linktr.ee slash Marietta uh, esports. Hold on one second. We're just gonna We're just gonna take that. Okay. I had to take care of that. Alright, but yeah, go to linktr.e slash Marietta uh, esports. And speaking of tryouts or in scholarships, yes, we do offer scholarships. If you are a high school senior or a college transfer, you do have to try out for it. Um but yeah, basically 
It's a three-step process. Fill out our recruitment inquiry form at bit.ly slash mcrecruit. Go to bit.ly slash mcesporttryouts and then go to bit.ly slash Discord to join our Discord server. We do have a couple tryouts scheduled for this month of March. So this Saturday, uh, if you're watching live on Twitch, it'll be this Saturday. If you're watching on YouTube, it depends on when I put it up on YouTube. But um, we will have in-person tryouts. So if you plan to be on campus this Saturday, we can set up a tryout while you're here. But if you're not going to be on campus, then you can uh, join us online on Saturday, March 25th. So you can sign up for either one of those and then you can see how you play. And hopefully we can say, if you come to Marietta College, we will give you a scholarship. But the QR codes are up on the screen right now. So you can screenshot it, pull your phones up to fill out the information. But uh, we only have a few more days left, a few more tryout dates. Uh, after that, then that will be it for scholarship opportunities. So if you've been thinking about whether or not you want to come to Marietta College to uh, be a part of the esports program, you're running out of time. So uh, yeah, go ahead and, and fill out the information. All right, uh, we're checking. I'm trying to do like, a, a le at least it feels like 11 billion things at, at once here, trying to make sure Valorant's good, trying to make sure our Rocket League team uh, is in good position. Uh, it looks like the third map is going to be Icebox. And I don't know what the sides are just yet. I'm going to go ahead and close that. I don't think we need that anymore. But all right. So we are just waiting for that selection. And then we will be good to go. Uh, the lobby has been created. We're just waiting for everyone to get in. So we should be. Oh, hello. Making sure everything's good here. Okay, yeah, that's still good. Making sure we have that up. Okay. Yeah, so we're just waiting for that last selection and it would be good to start. Uh, one thing that's worth mentioning to everyone, and we were kind of talking before about this uh, before the stream. So Gecko has been released since our uh, last match. And according to NACE rules, Gecko will not be playable for two weeks. So if you were hoping to see Gecko play, I hate to disappoint you, but there will be no Gecko uh, today, and I guess he is pretty overpowered. He is a pretty good and very strong character. It, it's it's kind of difficult to play against him sometimes, just because of his abilities and the way he works. It's it's kind of weird to get used to, to yeah. be honest. You were talking about like how, how he's these pets that can like one shot you with one ability, or plant a, uh, the spike with another ability. It it's it's just all over the place. <laughs> But yeah, so we will not see any uh, Gecko this week or next week's match because uh, we will have uh, our Valorant team playing again next Monday, if I remember correctly. We can always go to our athletic site and we do have the full schedule up. But speaking of schedules, let me go ahead and throw in one thing real quick here. Let's see, do I have a working image for Actually, I think I do. What am I, what am I thinking here? I'm going to try to create an image on the fly and failed miserably at it. Okay, I'll just do this. And image and we'll use, we'll use this one. And we'll just go ahead and pull up the match schedule for this week and you'll see we have quite a few matches going on. So as we said, we have our Valorant and Rocket League match is going on today. The Rocket League is going to start closer to 8.30 instead of 8, but we won't be able to stream it. Tomorrow, we will have two matches for you. Our Rocket League team will be playing against Tiffin at 5.30, and then overall, we'll be playing against Michigan Flint uh, at 7. Wednesday, our Overwatch team will be back playing against Tiffin at 4. It might be 4.30. I don't think we're going to be able to stream that, but we will still let you know how that goes. And then Thursday... Our Smash team will be playing against Eastern University at 7. And our Overwatch team will be playing against Kaiser Jacksonville at 7. And then on Saturday, our Rocket League team will be playing against Mount Vernon Nazarene at noon. And then our uh, Overwatch team will be playing against Trine at 2. So, yes, the uh, Overwatch team is going to be very busy this week. 
four games, it's going to be a rough week here yeah. for Overwatch. This is what happens when uh, we had to reschedule all of our matches during spring break. We had about 13 matches to reschedule between GLEC and NACE and CLOL. So uh, some of those matches took place before the break. Now we're dealing with a lot of those matches after the break. But all right. Uh, it looks like we're starting to get people in the lobby, so we should be starting up soon. So we'll go over one more announcement. Uh, we do want to thank all of you for your support through our Twitch channel. It is one of our main sources of revenue. So thank you for the follows. Thank you for the subscriptions. If you're not in a position to be able to sub, we don't want you to put yourself in a financial burden. But if you are able to subscribe, it is greatly appreciated. If you have Amazon Prime, uh, there is this thing called Prime Gaming where you can connect your Twitch account to your uh, Amazon Prime account to give you Prime Gaming, which gives you all sorts of perks, such as free in-game items. I know Valorant likes to give you like little keychains and sprays and little cool cosmetics for free. Uh, you might be able to get a free game if you wanted to, uh, depending on the game. But you also get a free sub every 30 days that you can use on any channel of your choice, including the... Uh, our channel if you wanted to and what do you get by subscribing to our channel well you get um, instant access to our vods we do upload all of our channels uh, all of our channels we upload all of our videos onto our YouTube channel but it may take a couple of days to get everything processed if you want to access them right away then subscribing will do that and then you also get access to our custom married to college emotes uh, these were created courtesy of our communication brand management department they're amazing. You can express all sorts of emotions depending on how the pioneers are doing. And I think I've hinted before the break that uh, our communication brand management department is working on some new emotes. So just to put that out there, I've looked at them, at least a couple of samples. They look amazing. And I think there's going to be some different options of how to express yourself and even how to identify yourself. So we're really excited to, to see the final version. I don't have a timeline of when those are going to be ready. With our luck, it'll be after the competitive season, but we'll at least get them out there when we can. But, uh, but yeah, thank you once again for all of your support. All right, so it is looking like everyone is finally in the lobby here. So I think we're just waiting to get everything set up. Although interesting that the uh, the team has decided to all use the same icon, the uh, the Valorant icon. They're unified. There we go. They're just unified. So they have. The, oh, Spence had the the change. You guys don't see it, but uh, had to ruin it. Yeah, they had just ruined it for everyone. There goes the unity. If we if we lose this match, it's it's totally because of the icons. Use the icons. Yeah, one hundred percent. But, all right, I think there's just still waiting for a couple of people who are still in game. So I think they're just trying to finish up a few things. But we should be starting very soon. As we said, um, first map will be Haven with Marietta defending. Second map, what did I say second map was? Ascent. Ascent, and I think Marietta is attacking that one. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And then if we go to map three, it will be Icebox. And I think... What did Mary to say? Now I gotta look it up here. They're actually choosing attack for Icebox. So if we go to that, that's if that goes to map three. Right, but as as we've seen, anything can happen, including thirty six rounds for a single game. Let's not relive that. Let, let's. Try. I mean, it was exciting, but yeah, let's let's uh, just kind of close it out a little bit sooner i'm already tired enough let's not <laughs> let's not straighten it out any for longer than we have to all right well they're trying to get things set up i think there's a couple of technical issues and now it looks like lords is uh, i keep saying lords because their director was the former director of lords i'm sorry saint xavier is using their own unified icons I feel like we just have to swap over now. We're just going to swap over so you can see what we're talking about. Yeah, at this point. There we go. So you can see the team has unified icons except for Spence being the rebel. And then St. Xavier mostly has the same icons except for Monkey 
Although it, it's still a knife. I mean, they all do have a knife icon, I guess. The icon they're trying to match is in the battle pass, so, I, <laughs> so it kind of makes sense that not all of them have it. But yeah, we should be uh, starting things up very soon here. making sure double checking a few other things because i'm double checking to make sure rocket league is good rocket league might be good i guess we're gonna find out in a little bit all right so i'm still wait looks like Spence is still in game so i think we're waiting for him to finish up before we get started here once again I do apologize for it taking a while to get everything set up there was just a minor delay with uh, St. Xavier having a couple of Rocket League matches beforehand. And then it's just getting all the maps, picks, and bands set up and make sure everyone's good to go. But we should be starting here any second now. Hopefully. Yeah. I'm just going to double check. Might lock on you, but okay. Just double check in the lobby chat. Okay, everything there looks good. I think just still waiting for... I think someone from St. Xavier said they're having some tech issues. So I think he's just in-game practicing to make sure all the settings are good. Because I mean, you don't want to have technical issues in the middle of a, a round and you either have to reset or pause or... If there's going to be a delay, I'd rather have it be before the match than during the match. True. Once again, as a reminder, both teams are right now undefeated in their NACE Varsity Plus conference. Marriott is right now 3-0. St. Xavier is 4-0. So it's just building up the hype here of the battle of the undefeated. One team's going to walk away remaining undefeated. And it's possible. I mean... This could very well, in the conference, be the battle for first place for the uh, the conference season. And whoever wins this could very likely remain undefeated for the remainder. These are the two top dogs of the conference, so mm -hmm. I mean... Yeah, if we take a look at... Try to pull up the uh, standings here. I don't know if I'm going to have a great way to do that. I'll try to make sure everything is good. Uh, let me try doing it this way. This is the only way I know how to do it. Yeah, so right now... This event history... Wish it would give me, like, the standings. I mean, I guess it kind of gives the standings. Like, that's what watch. But yeah, Missouri State's three and one, Cotty College is three and three, Manchester JV's two three, uh, LSU is zero four, and Manchester C is zero four. So if we look at the remaining schedule for the Valorant team, the only games they have left would be against. Missouri State and Manchester C. So the Missouri State is three and one. So there's no telling how that one would go. But if Marietta wins this, the only with Manchester being zero four, I would say the Pioneers have a good chance of um, going undefeated. But I haven't had a chance to see who Saint Xavier is has already played and will be playing. All right, still checking a couple things. We're gonna just make sure the uh, everything's good with the team. So give me one second here. I'll be back in just a minute. We're not gonna go for a break or anything, but I'm just gonna mute the mic one second to make sure that everything is good to go.
All right, folks, as you can see, we are getting things started up. Apologize for the delay, but sometimes good things come to those who wait. <laughs> so here we go. Marietta will be defending first, and St. Xavier will be attacking. So let's talk agents. Looks like St. Xavier already basically knew what they wanted to go with. Mm -hmm. A little bit of a breach Sova combo here. Little bit interesting to me, honestly. You don't see those two matched up together as often as you would think. They're both really good characters if you know how to use them right, but you don't really see those two together. They're both pretty difficult to use, in so my opinion. The fact that they locked them in means that they probably have a predetermined strat on how they want to play it. And we're gonna see McLovin bring out the Brimstone. I don't know. If I don't know if I've seen him play the Brimstone, maybe once before, but not that often. To me, Brimstone's an also an interesting pick, just all around, just because of once you place down his smokes, there's no way to get him back at all. Once you place down three, you don't have smokes for the remainder of the round. <laughs> so, to me, that's a little bit interesting. Yeah, and it looks like the UI is good here, so we don't have to do anything fancy to show the score, so that's always good. It's fixed this time. Yeah. But we have the, the right, correct setting this time. But, alright, but it is going to be the pistol round. And of course, the challenge with this is the fact that there are three points that Mary is going to have to defend. But we will have to see where St. Xavier is looking at. Nice scouting around. Spence does take some hits and already very low and has to fall back. Now we're seeing St. Xavier looking to group. Well, they were grouping up. We're seeing the omen from St. Xavier is going to be bringing out the smokes. Smoke. And McLove is going to be bringing out smokes, but going to get flanked from behind. Spike planted. And we're already seeing two of the pioneers have gone down. Spence does get one, but does end up going down. And Mom goes down, so it's just Wave on the sky. And I don't think there's going to be much you can do, especially when it's 1v4. And does get taken down, so St. Xavier will take that first round. Yeah, St. Xavier just dealt a lot of damage on Dispense there at the start. And sort of just all, they all just came together and sort of pushed in slowly on that low player. Yeah, they, they knew that it was already vulnerable, so they were exploiting that. Where are you? Already seeing the smokes coming out again. Looks like Marietta is kind of converging between sites B and C, but it's an interesting call since St. Xavier is kind of looking at site A. We are seeing the smokes coming out, and St. Xavier will start planting. The engineer takes a hit, throws a grenade, and wave is going to fall. Spence does get one. Throws out the smoke, tries to get the weapon, was not able to do so. And the glove is going to go down, so it's just uh, Mom and Weenie Hut Jr. 
And Zechariah will go to St. Xavier. I mean, with the weapon, being able to get the weapons definitely helps. Yeah, uh, and it was a quite a little bit of a sneaky play coming from St. Xavier, kind of faking a smoke over on Seaside and baiting Marietta over to that side, side of the map, and slowly rotating over to A. Exposing A entirely. Yeah, it, they definitely fell for it, and it worked in St. Xavier's favor because favor, then they were able to take the, the, uh, the site and then use smokes to make it difficult for Marietta to retake. And now Marietta is able to buy. But now St. Xavier may be looking at Site C. I'm just going to have to be careful. Grenade does go out. Mob gets one, but goes uh, down. We need how Junior is going to fall. And St. Xavier is a group. Spike planted. Will plant, but it is a 3v3 with several from St. Xavier damaged. McLovin does go down. So now it's just going to be Spence and Wave. And Wade gets the jet. Smokes are coming out. Spence gets both. And clutches that round for Marietta. Yeah. And I think he's got enough time to defuse. My yep. And there it is. Maybe he had just a few seconds to spare, but we'll take it. That, that was a very close call of a round right there. Bring, coming down to the last player. Those types of rounds always got you on the edge of your seat. <laughs> However, Marriott is going to be unable to full buy this round because they lost all their guns in the, left in the previous round. Yeah, it was just Spence that stayed alive. And even though everyone from St. Xavier died, they got weapons back. Had to use up a good amount of their econ, but it's still, it looks like their round's going to be in uh, St. Xavier's favor. In fact, Marietta may be looking to econ this round. Although Spence is going to pop the ultimate right away. We may see a, a skirmish here between Weenie Hunt Jr. and the Owen. And gets caught. And now we're going to see... St. Xavier going for Site A. Smoke's going to be coming out by McLovin to kind of slow down St. Xavier. And that's going to, going to force them to rotate. Now Wave is keeping an eye on Site B. Not gonna find anyone there. In fact, St. Xavier's gonna go all in on Site C, and I don't think Marietta's gonna notice it. Thirty seconds left. I think Wave spotted the the jet, so now Marietta's starting to rotate over to the site. Wave is looking for a flank. The jet's right there. And able to use that blind to take down the jet. But it gets blinded himself. So it's now a 3v4. McLovin takes down one. But goes down himself. So now Mom's going to be coming in. Goes down. So it's just going to be Spence that's left. And I don't think as much Spence can do. Does take down the breach. But yeah, at this point, there's just gonna have to retreat. You save your gun at this point. It's the best decision to make. Mm -hmm. So once again, Marietta's gonna be struggling on their econ. 
Well, actually, no, because they econ last round, so they're able to the full buy. And so far, what I'm seeing is uh, San Xavier is really good about playing that slow game, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. Mm -hmm. We're seeing that they're being very patient. Get out of my way! And we're gonna see Wave pop into ultimate. Spence gets a huge snipe onto the jet. Like. You're gonna peek? Peek around and find out. Ended up canceling the Jet ultimate entirely. That is a very big play for Marietta. I didn't even notice that Jet popped the ultimate there. I thought for some reason I was thinking that uh, Wave popped this off, but I was wrong. But yeah, just taking out the Jet ult is, is huge. And despite the fact that it's three and one, Spence has been playing very well this game. Now we're gonna see and see if you're rotating around. And we're gonna see mom takes a hit, takes gets blinded, but it gets taken down in between. And Weenie Hut Jr. also falls. So once again, St. Xavier find the opportunity and they're gonna start playing the spike. Spike planted. Wave taking use of the sights, but gets traded. So it's just Spence and McLovin that's left. Trying to use the smokes as cover. McLovin gets one, but it goes down. Spence gets one, so now it's a 1v1. You should run. And we're seeing the Killjoy ult coming out to try to prevent Spence from defusing. He's gonna start defusing. But once again, just not going to have enough time, and I don't think he's going to escape. He is not. He got caught by the Killjoy out there last second. That is unfortunate. I mean, that's a good use of the Killjoy ult to secure that round. Marietta is falling behind quite a bit. We're seeing it's definitely affecting their econ, not able to really get even close to a full buy. Meanwhile, uh, St. Xavier is just, just going to be able to continue the full buy. Never seen St. Xavier. Once again, eyeing site A. Those smokes are... Yeah, and they predicted that Spence was going to be there. Vinyak Jr. does take down the jet, though, so it's a one-for-one -one trade. Vinyak Jr. gets two. But does go down to the omen. McLovin takes quite a few hits and gets finished off by the Killjoy, so it is a 3v2. And St. Xavier is going to plant. Spike planted. One Wade gets one and gets another. One enemy remaining. So it's a 1v1 trying to find the Killjoy. We'll start defusing. Gets it halfway. And does take down the Killjoy and will secure the round. Taking, getting that triple kill there at the end came in clutch for Marietta. A much needed round for Marietta. So it's now two to four. We see several ultimates available. Marietta having two, almost three ultimates, and just about even with Santa Xavier. That's a little bit interesting. It seems like a lot of ults have been popped this game, but it it really hasn't been. That's true. I mean, I mean we did see. Oh, 
Let's see how mom's doing. Because mom did get a kill. Because St. Xavier's looking at all in onto site C. There. Going to fall back. Does spot one. So gets a second. Gets blinded and will fall back. And gets another one. And gets a 4k. And McLovin actually gets the last one with his ult. So Stealing the ace with the ultimate. That is unfortunate. Well. It's still around. I'm sure Mom would have loved to get the ace though. But the breached ult did secure it. Always better to secure the round over than get, <laughs> getting the ace. Yeah, so one of the things that we're noticing is Marietta is using their ults more frequently. That's something we talked about in prior matches where they just seem to kind of hang on to their ults and try to get some value for using it, but we've already seen some ult usage by the Pioneers early on, which is great. And they're doing a very good job about spacing them out and not using them all at once. Yeah, because they still have two ready to go. Spence does have the shotgun ready in case anyone comes by that smoke. But he will fall back. Spots the jet, although he takes a huge hit. Takes out the drone and another smoke comes out. They're trying to finish him off and they do. Although we need Jr. pop the ultimate and does get the hit down the omen with it. Grenade. He's gonna throw the grenade. Planted. Spike does get planted. And gets taken down while... I think, was he about to use his ult? He was about to. He hadn't used it yet. He was just pulling it out. Yeah, so it's just Winnie Hut Jr. that's left. It does end up going down. But it's a good thing actually he went down when he did because otherwise that would have been a wasted ult. So he still has it. But we do see that St. Xavier got the round by getting picks. And not even using any of their ultimates. So they have three ready to go. And Killjoy just has her ult ready to go as well. Some gunshots being fired. Love is check in the middle, but no one's going by there. Bomb did spot the breach. Takes a small hit, but gets a good hit onto the breach. And Wave is going to rotate over. Spence taking down the Omen. We're seeing that St. Xavier may be looking to rotate, and Marietta will rotate as well. This is going to kind of hang around just in case. And unfortunately, Mom does go down. And that breach all coming out to concuss wave takes some hits and ends up falling because he was concussed. Seconds left. And now we see Spence popping his ultimate. Gets one, but it's taken down by the other. There. It is still a 2v2 though, so it is Boy. still possible. One enemy yeah, we need a junior takes that one, ends up falling, standing. so now it's just McLovin versus the Jet. And he spots the jet. Stim beacon down. But ends up going down 3k, going to the jet, and oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, it, it seemed like Jet saw him just as she dashed by and had his location. Yeah, and Spence was able to get a kill with the ultimate, but gets taken down right away afterwards. So it is now three to six. St. Xavier up by three. Three rounds away from 
the swap. Watch and, and learn. We're seeing that Mom is hanging on to that ultimate for a while now. And Spence is going to get taken down very early. Mom tries to go for the snipe and doesn't get it. Everyone's just kind of peeking around and trying to see what's there. Uh, we're seeing Saint Xavier playing very patiently, as they have been all game. Even with the player advantage, they're still playing slow. Yeah, they're, they're starting to migrate over to Site C. Goes to the sniper, just not able to get it, but he's going to get taken down by the jet. And now the Omen ult's going to be coming out to teleport right onto the site. And they will start planting. Spike planted. Now the rest of the team will be rotating over. They do not have any ultimates available. And Saint Saber still has their three. The blind does go out. But McLovin's gonna go down, and just like that, a quick just three down for Marietta, and Saint Xavier will have a flawless round. Yeah, it seems like Saint Xavier is just playing together. Like they know what they wanna do when they wanna do it, and their execution is flawless so far but what we're seeing is they've always been playing as a group of five they they don't split i mean they they look around a little bit but as soon as there's an opening the entire team will converge in that direction so like right now we see them all grouped up looking at site a they're just going straight in they're not even waiting for a pick yeah, I mean, they have three ultimates, so I'm expecting to, to use a few. And we're starting to see several abilities being popped. The Killjoy ult's gonna be used, and Weenie Hunt Jr. is gonna go down. Spence is very low in health, the spike's already planted. So that was actually a case where they were playing more aggressively. Now they're just waiting for the Killjoy ult to expire, and now they're gonna start moving in. Wave does end up going down. And now Mom is popping the ultimate. But it's just not going to be enough. And another flawless round for St. Xavier. But I mean, that Killjoy all just bought St. Xavier the time they needed to secure the site. And then put the smokes down, and then when Marietta tried to come in, they, there wasn't a whole lot they can do. It seems like Marietta, ap after the spike gets planted, Marietta seems to just funnel into Where sight one by one, and they get picked off one by one. Get out of my Not way. really a whole lot of teamwork going in on there. Yeah. They... See, the jet all is coming out. Wave is checking to see if anyone peeks by. Spots one, but is not able to finish him off. Now we're seeing St. Xavier playing more slowly. Big scout the location bolt. But Spence is going to get one pick. Actually gets two. Looking for a third. And he will get that third. He does end up going down, but taking three down by himself is a huge play. Wade takes down one. So now it's just the, the Sova. And Mom gets that killing blow, and Marietta will secure the round before swapping. And only losing a couple players in the process. Switching sides. 
Although it's unfortunate because everything resets now, but still, it's great. Yeah. It's, they won the last... They, 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 they got four rounds in that first half. It's it's still doable. Oh, yeah. I mean, we've, we've seen wider gaps. So now Marietta will be on offense. So we'll see how they play as a, a unit. In previous uh, matches, Marietta has been a lot more aggressive in like a lot more I don't know what the word is uh, better at teamwork I guess more coordinated more coordinated and do a lot better on attack yep. so we're gonna see how they do here on attack Spence is immediately moving and gets concussed bring up the blind dashes back and Spence gets one does end up going down. Mom gets one. Wade gets another. So there's only two left for St. Xavier, although both Mom and McLovin are very low. They do get the spike planted. Now Mary is just trying to right, hang on to the, the site. Although we're going to see one enemy remaining. The omen goes down, so it's just a killjoy. Although Wade gets the killing blow, and Marietta will take that first round. That's that's the teamwork that we've been waiting for from Marietta this entire map so far. Getting get working together to get onto the site, trading off of each other if they need to, and holding together. Yeah, we saw there in a lot of cases, even when someone fell, another person was able to get a refrag right away. And now we'll see what Mary's gonna do. Looks like they're eyeing maybe Site B. You see the smoke. Spence is gonna be moving it right away. Catches the killjoy right above. Doesn't get it though. Although it's another two for two trade. So now it's a 3v3. And meanwhile, Mom is just gonna rotate over to site A. And I don't think St. Xavier's aware of this. Not at all. Yeah, they're still keeping an eye on Site C. And they're gonna realize, oh, it was planted at Site A. And they immediately rotate for it. Bring them down. And breaks out the... Prowler, turrets are being used. But McLovin does fall. Well, Mom goes down, so it's just Weenie Jr. that's left. Weenie Jr. gets one, but does not get the others, so St. Xavier will be able to defuse in, with just a few seconds left. I could not have made that and Weenie Hutt Jr. got them both so low. They were both at half HP after that. And it just was not enough, unfortunately. It was not enough. I mean, it's possible with as close as it was, if you, it would take, maybe take down the Killjoy. and Because I think it was Killjoy that was trying to defuse. So if you took down Killjoy, Jet might not have had enough time to defuse, even if they did take down Winnie Hot right there. That I am not sure. I, it, it's hard to tell. It depends on if Killjoy got the spike to half defuse or not. That's true. I, I had no idea if that was the case. I did not catch if she did or not. And a quick update on the Rocket League match that's going on between the Pioneers and Valpo. Uh, Valpo is... Let's see here. Well, actually, I think the game just ended. Because it was, Valpo was up 2-0. to zero, uh, But it looks like Valpo just did win game 3. Uh, 
but they were very close scores. It looks like the uh, game differential was off by one goal each. And now we're seeing a lot of... I go, Wave does end up going down. Very well, Spence is in a little bit of a firefight uh, with the Omen. Mom ends up falling. And we're starting to see St. Xavier using their numbers advantage to try to pinch the Pioneers. McLovin does get picked Strike off, so now down. it's just Spence Attackers and uh, Weedy Hut Jr. Last player standing. And it's just a flawless round for St. Xavier. I'm amped. Let's go. I got things to do. Uh, yeah, just to confirm the scores for the Rocket League match, game one, it'll, Valpo got it three to two. Game two was also three to two in Valpo's favor. And game three, Valpo won four to three. So very close games all in all, but it was a 3 0 for Valpo. You hate to hear that sometimes. I know. When it's that close. That is unfortunate. I will say, though, I mean, Valpo is, has a very good esports program. And they've been established for many years. For our Rocket League team, two of the players are very new. Two. Spence is trying to get a pick there onto the jet. Get some damage, but he takes some damage himself. So a little bit of trading there. But, I mean, you have to realize that the Rocket League team is relatively new. Now, they do have Ozio, who is their captain, in graduating this semester. But trying to kind of give share that experience with the rest of the team. So I think Rocket League is going to be looking pretty good in the coming semesters, especially with some of the students that we think will be uh, joining us. And I was telling you earlier, I'm actually pretty stoked about what the, uh, the fall season is going to look like for many of our teams. But let's focus on this game right now. <laughs> Expensive waiver heading towards site B. We're saying we need a junior to already kind of secure the spot. There. Well, we are starting to see some fighting going on onto site B. And McLovin, we need a junior already go down. Wait, Spence gets one. And mom gets another. Spence gets another. One enemy remaining. And it's just one left. For St. Xavier, so Marietta will secure the spike, and unless that Omen's able to do a 3v1, I'm pretty sure Marietta's going to clinch this round. Oh, the Wave is only has five health left. So anything is possible, but they are checking all angles, all entrances. You know, Wave going out there at five health, I mean, this did scout him out. That mom does get the 3k and secures the round for Marietta. Even though Wave died there, he did get information on where, where Omen was. I think so. that's why he did that. Just knowing that, okay, I'm going to die anyway. So at least let me help spot where he's at. Sometimes you got to be the sacrificial lamb. Just sometimes. Sometimes. But, I mean, Marietta's still down by four. So they're going to have to get a couple of rounds of it. They've only gotten two rounds in a row earlier on and so they're gonna have to get a couple consecutive rounds if they want to get back into this game and we are seeing Marietta kind of going very quickly over the site a wave already popping is ultimate and trying to secure site a killjoy brings out the ultimate And Marietta gets the spike planted, but they're having the retreat from that Killjoy range. And that could be very risky because that's going to give uh, St. Xavier a chance to defuse. Brings out the, a huge play there with the Brimstone ultimate. Doesn't get any kills, but it does delay defusing, but I don't think it's going to be enough. And that Killjoy all just zoned everyone out so they can defuse it. Even with the Brimstone ult, that, that was a rough round for Marietta. Yeah, like, like I think they got the defuse over halfway before the Brimstone ult came out. Used it to get them off, but they weren't able to get back to the site fast enough. This entire map has been 
a really slow game, but once gunfire starts, chaos ensues. Mm -hmm. That is just, there's no in between. Until it's fast, it's slow. Yeah, exactly. Slow until it's fast. Get out of my way. And we're gonna see Spence popping the ultimate here. Kind of needs to. Merida being down by five rounds, they're gonna have to make some plays here. And Killjoy with that pistol is gonna be at a disadvantage against this Omen. And does get picked off by the Omen. Marion is playing very patient. Yeah, and unfortunately gets the blind on the omen, but the smoke kind of covers and it ends up going down. Spence gets concussed, does take some hits, but it's just Spence and McLovin. Another blind goes out, but once again, I don't think there's much Merida can do with only two left and all five from St. Xavier still up. They got about 10 seconds to get to a site, and I don't think there's anywhere left. McLovin can go. Uh. Uh. Last player standing. And at that point, there's just nothing you can do. Down by six at match point. Merida match is going point. to have to work really hard in order to pull this one off yeah and they only got bombs all meanwhile saint xavier has uh the omen and the breach alt they play it smart they can get some great value out of their abilities and yeah, they're gonna have to get some picks though if they're gonna secure the rounds and they're gonna start heading straight over to site A. Let's see if you get concussed, wait for that to fade. Face your fear. And we're seeing the ultimate coming out from mom, but that's gonna be them heading straight over to the site. And mom will start planting. And they get it. Mom gets concussed with the breach alt. Throws out grenades, and St. Xavier just collapsing on the Pioneers with the uh, the Breach Alt. Wave does take down one, so it's a 3v2. But they are starting to defuse, and Mom gets three down, but it's still a 1v1. Mom has left a 30 health. He goes down. And I think that's going to be enough. There is plenty of time for Killjoy to secure the defuse and does get it. Defenders win. Who's up for a debrief? Anyone? No one? And we're going to see with that. St. Xavier will take the first game 6 to 13. I still gotta hit this button. Oh, yeah. That's what this is what happens when it's like have a spring break because I forget how to do anything. I think I gave it to the wrong one. Did I? You oh. gave it to the wrong team. Oh yeah. Okay, that's fine. I could fix that. I'll just do that, and then just do that. There we go. That fixes it. See? Yeah, that's what happens when go. I'm on spring break. But okay, that looks better. But yeah, I mean, we're just kind of looking through here, like. Spence had some really good plays there, finishing 15-14-0. But we just saw a lot of times St. Xavier playing very patient, very methodical, always staying grouped up. And once they found one pick, they just collapsed. At the end of the day, it came down to who won the 1v1s mm -hmm. <laughs> or who took 2v1 fights mm -hmm. and played as a team, like taking fights not taking a fight that they know they can't win. And coordinating their ultimates. There were several times where they use ultimates as playmakers. 
I think every time they popped the Killjoy alt, they got a lot of value because they use it to secure two of the rounds for sure. The one where Marianne had to move away while that's going on, they respected the Killjoy ult. It was also used another point where they planted and then used it to move everyone away to eat out the clock. So they know how to use their ultimates in the right situations. And that's really what it comes down to in this game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think we're going to take a quick five-minute break. It's probably now four minutes but since we've been talking, but we'll take a, a small break here, and we'll be back with Map 2 in just a few minutes.
All right, and welcome back. Uh, we are getting things set up for the next map. It looks like it's going to be Ascent. And I think right now, is Marietta defending? I believe Marietta is defending first. Interesting that they de they're defending both times. Let's see, I got a message here. Oh, I got a friend request from Pioneer. Okay. All right, so just checking everything here. Ready checks are coming out. Marietta is saying they're ready. So just waiting for... Um, St. Xavier, and I'm checking a few things on Discord as well. All right. Yeah, we're still waiting for everyone to be ready. I don't think St. Xavier is ready just yet. Yeah, I'm not hearing anything back. So while we're waiting, we'll just quick reminder. We already talked about this earlier, but I'm going to go ahead and bring it up again. I think this is the right one. That is not the right one. I'm sorry. It's just um, a black screen. Now. That is a black screen. I was trying to pull up the schedule. Black screen of death. Hold on. There we go. We got a bunch of matches. And of course, now they just started the game because we did that. There you go. It's on our social media. Follow us on all of our social media channels for all the, the matches we have this week. All right, here we go. We are on Ascent. You lock in right away, bringing out. It looks like San Xavier is bringing out a KO this time instead of the breach like previously. But other than that, it looks like they're staying just about the same. We're gonna see that Killjoy again, and we saw how effective her ult was in the first map. So I'm gonna guess they have some plans uh, with it. Yeah, as you're saying, it's just a KO. The only difference, so more zoning potential. It looks like they they may have saw they have seen how effective the uh, the zoning was in the first map. Although we're seeing a couple of swaps for Marion. Although Spence and Mom are gonna to stick to. But they played in map one. Like, Lava bring out the Sage. We've seen him play that a couple times. Way bringing back the Omen. He's played that a lot before. Edible Drywall is known for his KO, so he's bringing that out. All right, we are getting things underway here. So, once again, Marietta will be defending first. Although I think it's easier to hold two sites than three, so this should be a little easier to work with. Just, just a little bit. A little. But we'll see if St. Xavier has the same play style from the first map where they play very patiently and look for that opening. And that does catch too. And we're already seeing a little bit of trading going on between Spence and the KO for St. Xavier. But we're going to see. St. Xavier was looking at Site B. That wall is going to come out. We're still seeing that very patient play for St. Xavier. Using that smoke as additional cover. He's looking to use that smoke again. Throwing out several smokes, going out left and right. And Wave takes down two before falling. 
Although McLovin gets a one for one trade, so it's now a 3v2. And St. Xavier is going to start planting. Spike planted. One enemy remaining. And Mariana is going to take down the Reds. Mom gets one, Spence gets one, and they will be able to defuse and take this first round. Thanks. Sharing the defusing, sharing the alt points. Very well executed from Mary and a big improvement from the last map. I mean, what really helped with that was first, they love him putting up that wall that really delayed St. Xavier, and then Wade bringing out the first smoke, and then they got blinded again. He was able to take down several, so a two for one trade there. It was able, just all that setup made a huge impact in the round. They made San Xavier wait till the very last second and made them feel like they had to rush in. Uh, we're going to see San Xavier once again. This time rushing right towards Site B. Not giving McLovin a chance with the wall. Although McLovin wave gets one down. Wave gets two. McLovin gets another and goes down. So it's just the omen that's left for St. Xavier. And Edible Drywall gets the killing blow. And that was just shots fired. All around, just literally just taking them down one by one as they funneled into sight. Yeah, very different from what we've seen with St. Xavier's playstyle. And it did not go well. I mean, Wave and McLovin were just. I think the phrase you used before was clicking heads. Clicking heads. Shadows traveling. So now Saint Xavier may be looking at site A. Edible Drywall does catch one. Gets smoked in the process. And Edible Drywall does go down. And everyone's gonna be rotating in and they're gonna start planting. Spike planted. Now Mary is starting to collapse in. Wave takes a lot of damage, but gets picked off. But Spence is going to get one, going to get two. Mom's going to get one. It's going to fall. So now it's a 2v2. Mom is the only one that's left with McLovin falling. And does end up going down, tries to get the pick, knew where they were at, but just not able to get the headshot in time. Just off on that headshot. Again, he, in fact, did not click on heads. I think we can hear the frustration. We can hear the frustration. He, he, he knew what he did. Yeah. Mom, you knew what you did. I feel like I'm talking to my mom now when I say that. <laughs> However, Marietta did take down three, and that has dealt a number on St. Xavier's economy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good observation there. Yeah, we see that a couple of them have to stick with pistols, although McLovin and Mom are gonna, actually, Sergeant yeah, Mariana are right. also gonna be going pistols, but we are seeing the jet ult coming out from St. Xavier very early. We're seeing St. Xavier going back to their play style of being very patient. And he's going to fall back, respecting that jet. And he's going to get smoked. And Spence, it's just unfortunate, did not see where they were at. Spike planted. Edible Drywall gets one, so it's now a 4v4. Surprising. Too surprising. Takes down the turret, but does end up going down. The rest of the area are starting to try to collapse. 
Maybe teleporting up top, trying to get the high ground, gets one, gets two, but ends up going down, so it's just Maul that's left. He has to watch that Jeff from behind, though. I don't know if there's much he can do, because now he's running out of time. It ends up going down. I don't know. Uh, no. I think they're gonna get away. Yeah, they're getting away. Yeah, they gotta. The timer went out. So it's now two rounds apiece. This looks like two play. One player on each team cannot buy this round. Oh, just kidding. There goes. The, comes out the op from Santa Xavier. Yeah, although it looks like Marietta bought rifles too, so no one's sticking with the pistol this time. And Mamba's gonna get detected. And it's gonna have to fall back. Does spot the, the jet who will have to retreat. I'm gonna see the wall coming out by McLovin, but interesting which side he's on. <sighs> that was a great patient move, just not able to get the 2k. If he had gotten the two two piece, even the 3k, that would have been big for Marietta. And the Killjoy ult is coming out. Mom is just firing in there. And it's just a two for one trade for St. Xavier. And the one was caught reloading, unfortunately. Oh, I think that didn't qu Ow. No, that was, that was accidental. He did not mean to do that. <laughs> I was talking about the headshot with the, the sniper. Oh, the headshot. No, that was on purpose. That yeah, I, yeah, I know. It's unfortunate with the uh, the throw there. I know that was not intentional. That was, that was not intentional. It was unfortunate. That is unfortunate. But then to add insult to injury, he gets headshot to the side. I mean, either way, I think he's getting headshot, but still unfortunate. Mm hmm. But now we see Marietta has three ultimates ready to go, and they almost have their other two as well. We'll see if they use anything here. And yeah, Spence is going to be hopping right away, looking for a quick play, but gets disabled. So Marietta tried to play aggressive, and it completely backfired. Absolutely just backfired like, on the them. suppression. Just completely negating that ultimate was very unfortunate. Yeah, that's... <laughs> I, mean, I know they were trying something, but it did not work, unfortunately. And so far, ever since round three, San Xavier has been able to just snowball this. Ever since round three, it's just been San Xavier all the way. Yeah, I'm not so sure what they were trying to do that last round, but. Beerzy McLovin gets it's a one for one trade early on, and the KL ult is going to come down. The wave with the 2K. Down, B. Cover going out. And we're gonna see it's just two, it's a 4v2 right now. So a minute five remaining. Spence was looking for make a play, but St. Xavier may be looking to rotate. And Wave gets it, teleports and takes one down. So now it's a 3v1.
30 seconds left. Kinda in a standstill right here. All Marietta has to do is wait for them to make a move. Ten seconds left. Got it. Your duty is not over. Out from me? Marietta made the play there. That's yeah. a little interesting. I find it interesting that they used the resurrection right there. That was not necessary. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't even know what to say about that. That's a little, a little bit of a weird one, but okay. Yeah, cause they won the round, so I, I guess. Yeah, but I don't think they needed to. They could have just waited out the last ten seconds, and they just would have won. And then had it the resurrect for the next round. Yeah, that's just an interesting choice. Spence does get one and dash away. No charges left. Little bit of a lag by here, looked like there. Well, it does say we're getting some high ping, but that just went away, so maybe it's better now? Maybe. Seeing a lot of uh, waiting at this point. Edible Drywall gets a headshot onto the jet. Although Mom is going to go down. Meanwhile, Wave is going to be looking to flank from behind. Does pick off the Killjoy. So it's now 4v2. seconds left we're seeing st. Xavier rotating around to site B I don't know if they have enough time and even if they do rotate over wave is going to be keeping an eye at that spot but I think st. Xavier is going to concede the round 10 seconds left looks like it's gonna tie this up for Marietta mm -hmm. And that will be the round. A little anticlimactic there, but it is a round. It's a round. Yeah, it's going to be tied up in three rounds apiece. I'm sorry, three alts apiece for each team. So we'll see if any of them get utilized in this one. It's definitely more back and forth from the first game. Right. I'm going to have to bring out that wall right away. Recon bolt comes out and Spence will be falling back. Fifty seconds left, and this has been very slow. But as we've seen, it's slow until it's fast. It's slow until it's fast, exactly. Thirty seconds left. Oh, we are seeing Saint Xavier looking at Site B. I'm gonna be falling back. And Wave is going to be a one-for-one one trade. And we're already seeing Spike does get planted. Mom's popping the ultimate. Edible Drywall gets one down. It's a one-for-one one trade. Mom gets one. So now it's a 3v2. Bring them down. One enemy 
remaining. Spence takes that one, so there's only one left for St. Xavier. And Spence is going to get the kill. So now he will start defusing. Thank you. And Marietta is able to take the lead off of that round. It's slow until it's fast. And so we just saw there, it went... It basically went from 0 to 60 real quick. Real quick. But yeah, just really good trades, really good plays. But we are seeing that Killjoy ult is almost going to be online for St. Xavier. So I can see that playing a role in the next round. Looks like once again St. Xavier is eyeing site B. I'll find you. Spence does get a little bit of damage from the omen before dashing away. Well, the wave does get taken down. So that might be St. Xavier's opportunity to do that. Although McLovin does take down the Jet. Although Spence is going to go down, we're going to start seeing St. Xavier collapsing over to Site B. McLovin is going to have to fall back. I'll find you. Here we're going to see St. Xavier starting to plant. Planted. And McLovin gets picked off by the Omen. Does not even see him behind him. Although with it being 2v4, it's going to be a little difficult. Edible Drywall gets two down, although Mom is going to go down, so it's just Edible Drywall, but I don't think there's much he can do. He takes down one. But he's not going to have time for the no, other one. he's not. But everybody died. Everybody dies. Fresh start. 5-5, five, five, even game. Two versus three ults. Look like uh, San Xavier is going to be down a rifle this round. And Marietta is bringing out the op. We've been seeing Spence playing the, the op more often. Get out of my way. But we're going to see the jet ult coming out from St. Xavier to try to even the odds. And Spence getting a huge pick with that op, although McLovin's going to fall. Killjoy ult being used over at Site B. Giving St. Xavier a chance. And that's unfortunate. Spence does get taken down, but Mom gets to pick on the the, uh, the KO. Although Wave is going to get one down, so it's now 3v2. And the spike is nowhere near the site, so even though St. Xavier secured it, they don't have the spike. We're just gonna kind of keep an eye on that spike. Shadows traveling. Thirty seconds left. Well, the edible travel does get picked off. Mom gets one, does not get the other. So now it's a 1v1, and unfortunate, they do get picked off with just a few seconds to spare. Last that round is unfortunate. At that point, I would have played to live. Yeah, I, I would think at that point, you just delay the clock. Because even if they grab the spike, they still have to get it all the way to the site, and I don't think it would have been enough time. Not enough they could have just delayed it and secured the round. 
I think that's I think that was a case of tunnel vision where the focus was getting kills when they could have they could have gotten that. And Jet had used her ultimate as well, so that would have been a waste of an ult. Yeah. And and we see Spence gets picked off very early on. And this is the last round for the swap, so they're gonna need to start popping uh, ultimates. And we're seeing all the ultimates flying for St. Xavier, although Wave does get one pick. Spike planted. They do get the spike planted. McLovin gets one kill. Kale has expired. But I'm surprised that we don't see like Edible Drywall using his ultimate. He might as well at this point. Wave does go down. Edible Drywall gets one. So now it's a 2v1. My ult's not there. McLovin is going to start no defusing. And using the Silva ultimate, I don't know if there's enough time. It doesn't matter because that Silva ult delayed. And, and another round for St. Xavier. Playing right into what the, the situation the Silva wanted. Post plant with his ult. Mm -hmm. I'm still surprised that Edible Drywall did not get a chance to use his ultimate that, because that was the last round. So that might have been a situation awareness issue. But still, it is a two round differential. So Merida can definitely come back into this. going to be collapsing over to site A. Oh, well, they were, but now it looks like they're going to split. Keep some pressure on the site A between Spence and Wave. But the rest of the team is heading straight over to site B. Yeah. We are seeing they're trying to keep some pressure there while the rest of the team is heading straight over to site B. And they will get that spike planted, although Spence is going to go down in the process. And Wave is going to trade. Just can be ready to hold out. Is it three versus four? And it's another one for one trade. The KO getting three down. Mom takes down one. And I think there's still enough time to defuse. And St. Xavier will take the first pistol round of the second half. It was very smart of the KJ to stay over on B site while the rest of St. Xavier rotated over to A just in case Marietta rotated to B site. And it worked out for him that time. Is looking at site B. And they're going to converge over at the middle. But Spence is going to get picked from behind. And they're just getting pinched. And 
it's just gonna be mom and way that's left last player standing I have the spike Seems like Marietta is just trying to brute force it at this point. And it's not working out too great in their favor. Yeah, we saw that before in the last map one time. I think they were... I think, and I could be wrong with this, I think they're trying to go for like a surprise like Zerg attack. Because sometimes that could throw off the enemy if you do something very different than what's expected. they just not able to execute it right. Like they moved in, but... Like, no one was paying attention to the Killjoy behind him, and Killjoy was able to get two kills from behind. So, like, if you're going to do that, you have to make sure you're watching all angles. Now, Spence gets an early pick, and Mom's going to get one, so... There's where you have the numbers advantage, and they're going to start moving in. Edible Drywall did fall, but it's still a 3v4 in Marietta's favor. But Spence does get pit, get headshot by the KO, and that Omen will the op playing very well. So what started off to be a really good opening for the Pioneers got picked off very quickly as soon as they entered the site. They did not have the surprise that they had earlier. Although, Bob was able to get one. But did not get another. So it looks like a timeout is going to be called by the Pioneers. Probably going to talk over some things because it is 10 to 2. And the, the thing is, right now, St. Xavier has taken six rounds in a row. Last three while uh, Merida was on defense, but they've taken the first three rounds while on offense. Yeah, it it was close and very a very good start for Marietta. However, that's starting to fall off now. They're starting to lose that cooperation that they had at the start of the game, and they're falling apart at the seams. Yeah. I mean, it's very well possible that we're not seeing the, the communication from before, and being careless so i think they're kind of talking things over using this as an opportunity to reset to say hey let's get back into things let's refocus and we'll see if that timeout pays off because saint xavier is two rounds away from i'm oh, sorry three rounds away why do i always think it's 12. i don't i always keep thinking the, the number is 12. there's Maybe, maybe I have a thing for 13. Maybe I'm superstitious. I just don't like the number 13. That's what it is. It's 13 rounds. Deal with it. I know. But St. Xavier is three rounds away from taking the series. We're seeing the smoke coming out uh, by St. Xavier's Omen. Marietta's trying to look at Site A. But it's going to be really difficult with that smoke placement. They may have to rotate around. What's interesting is they're actually going to stick around. A lot of abilities are being used right now. Shadows traveling. I don't think they know there's an omen behind them. They do not. And that omen is just waiting for Marietta to push onto site. Last player standing. Yeah, and it's just the just wave that's left. Although, once again, we see Marietta... Marietta jumps into the site without... I don't know if it's just a lack of a strategy or what's missing, but they're just getting picked off one by one as soon as they enter. I, I think it's uh, they're forcing their way in and getting punished. And they're neglecting to check hiding spots where the other team could be potentially hiding. Yeah, we're just seeing the, the tunnel vision coming into play. Now, Marietta still has the ability to full buy, but if they lose this round, it's going to look like they're really hurting on their econ. So they need this round, otherwise the next one's going to be very difficult. Marietta needs to take this round if they want to stay in this game.
So Marriott is playing a lot slower this time. And we're going to see Wave immediately getting headshot by uh, St. Xavier's Jet. And we're going to see the Jet ult coming out. Thirty seconds left. Uh, Marion is going to have to make a play now. Edible Drive will gets picked off. And we're just seeing down, kills left and right with less than 10 Eight seconds. Seconds I don't think there's really anything McLovin can do. At this point, probably just best to stay alive. You just save that rifle, because they're going to need it for the next round. Mm -hmm. Because point. it is match point, we and... We fight once again. Now, fortunately, Marietta was able to get a... A little bit of econ to buy. It's not a full buy though. Meanwhile, St. Xavier is plenty to spare. So Marietta is going to have to find something and make some plays. And not only make plays, but make sure they stay alive too. And they're gonna get spotted out immediately by the KO knife. Yeah, so they're just have to fall back. And the one thing that will help them this time is just there's only the KO ult for Saint Xavier, but that can be a huge playmaker. And Spence does get taken down. The KO actually gets two kills. And the ult comes out. Although McLovin does take down the Omen. Just waiting for that ult to land. But Wade does take down Jet. The Jet was not even where he, he was uh, He was there. We're gonna teleport over to the site. And they do get the spike planted. So now the question is can they hang on? Because they have to if they want to stay alive. Otherwise, it will be GG. Will Drywall takes out the drone. And it's a one for one trade. McLovin does have his ultimate ready, but he gets taken down, so it's just Wave trying to delay the clock. Does get one. The question is, I, I think there's still enough time to defuse. There is still enough time. The GGs are coming out, and that is going to be it. So despite their best attempt, I was very close, it just... If they were able to lay a few more seconds, they would have gotten it. But that is going to be it. The Pioneers will fall 5-13. to 13. And we're just looking at the, the score breakdown here. Wave finished that with 16-16-4. Uh, and McLovin was second for the team at 12-16-4. But we're just seeing how well... Uh, St. Xavier was playing there. Their Jet, who has been playing well all night, finishing 21 with only 9 deaths during that entire uh, second map. And even the KO finishing 16-14-9. Uh, we just kind of saw there, I, I think Marietta ran out of gas a little bit partway through. Yeah, a, little, a little bit of gas, yeah. Mm -hmm. They, they definitely ran out of the motivation to actually work together as a team and pull through. Uh, you saw that kind of fall off there yeah. about halfway through. Yeah, we, we saw that they, they were trying some things that didn't work, and it seemed like the communication was, was breaking down. So that's just going to have to be a work in progress. Yeah. But all right. 
So that is going to be it for us today. So everyone, thank Corey for helping here. I know it's the first day back from break. We're still getting adjusted to the time zone change because I don't think anyone ever gets adjusted to that. So thank you for coming once again to, to help talk about Valorant here. First day back, I'm already exhausted. All right, well, we'll close out here so you can get to bed. But uh, just as a reminder, we will have some matches coming for you tomorrow. Our Rocket League team will be playing at 5.30, and then our Overwatch team will be playing at 7. So please be sure to come back for that. For all the latest updates with what's going on with Meredith College Esports, please be sure to follow us on Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. Shoutouts again to HyperX and Over the Moon Pizza for their support. Thank you all for your follows. Thank you for your subscription. Shout out to Epinions. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but shout out for the Tier 1 sub. So thank you so much for that. And we hope you enjoy the rest of your evening.